Hey everyone, smile, you're on Snapchat. <laughs> Vanessa has release forms you can sign on the way out. <laughs> Do you know what these are? These are the Snapchat spectacles. You hit a button, it takes 10 seconds of video. Syncs up over Bluetooth with your Snapchat if you happen to be young enough to use Snapchat. I had a colleague recently look at me when I got my spectacles and say, why do you have those? <laughs> what could you possibly do with those? Um, but, you know, I'm in the business, so I have to keep track of all these things. Um, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, SFHTML5. This is the third year in a row that this meetup group has allowed us to do a crossover meetup. I'm the co-organizer of the WebVR meetup in San Francisco. A couple of my co-organizers are here somewhere. Christopher, Philip, you in the audience somewhere? If you are, um, shout, raise your hand. Carter Fox Grover. So they're here mulling around. Say hi, they're back there. Um, also, I'm a co-organizer of the WebGL meetup in San Francisco. Damon, are you here? Damon Hernandez is also kicking around, as well as affiliated with the Silicon Valley WebGL meetup. I don't know if Shannon's in the room. Uh, so yeah, I got a bit of a big footprint in the meetups world here. Also, I'm an O'Reilly author. I've written two books on WebGL and one on virtual reality. And for my day job, I work at Unity Technologies. We are um, the premier platform for developing VR and AR. Uh, very easy to use uh, mobile development and desktop development platform. If you're not familiar with us, you should be. We're right down the street in San Francisco. Um, mostly a creation tool for native applications, but we do actually do things in web as well. That's me. So how many people here have tried virtual reality? Pretty much everyone in the room at this point. OK, so this is the Oculus Rift desktop virtual reality system using um, these two hand controllers they call the Oculus Touch controllers to give you direct manipulation input. It is a positional system where you can walk around and move around in virtual reality. There are other high-end desktop positional systems like the HTC Vive. There are mobile virtual reality systems. Do we know what this is? This is the Google Daydream. Right, you drop in a Google Pixel phone. Samsung has one called the Gear VR. It was the first uh, deluxe mobile VR headset out there that you put a Samsung phone in. Lots of options for building your VR. But, and most of those are app-based. You create a native application, distribute it through an app store like Oculus Store, uh, like the Google Play Store, like Samsung's uh, Oculus Home for the Gear VR, or Steam for Vive. Um, and those are all app-based, and those are really great and deep experiences. But uh, I don't know if you, a lot of you know this, but if you're in the mobile world, apps are kind of on the wane. Um, this stat is actually from a couple of years ago, but it's a pretty compelling stat, and I don't think this has gotten any better in the apps world, which is that most phone users download zero apps per month. Now, I don't know what you folks are like. I know what I'm like. I'm not a, even though I work at Unity, I'm not a game player. I'm not an avid game player. I play like rock band and stuff. I like music games. I'm just not a you know hardcore gamer. Um, and so I really rarely get apps. And almost every app I have, I've, I, I, every app I use, I'm, I have. And I don't need them more because I'm not you know playing Bejeweled or some new game. Um, and most of the apps that I do have consume web content. They're Facebook. They're Twitter. They're Slack. They're bringing in a bunch of data from the web anyway, right? Um, so if you look at the two stores globally, the, the big ones, the Google Play Store, the uh, Apple Store, there are about three million apps published through those, about a million and a half each. That's a rough stat, but something like that. There's a billion websites out there. About a quarter of them are active, but still that means there are two orders of magnitude more websites than there are mobile apps in the world. So think about that for a minute and think about th what that means as you start thinking about how virtual reality is built and deployed. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. We're talking about WebVR. Uh, WebVR is browser-based VR built in HTML5 with a few new APIs. Um, and what that gets us is instant access. It's not about downloading apps anymore. It's about you get a URL and you open a page and then you bring, in, bring it into VR. Or you're already in VR and you get a link through some means we can talk about in a bit. Um, and you just jump to that place. There's no thinking about installing. There's no download. You just get instant access to the experience. It also means you have a full web stack at your disposal to actually create your application with. So if you're a developer and want to build things, you want to bring together, say, Twitter or Wikipedia or other information sources and all those Mashable APIs that are out there in the world, you can do that using JavaScript standard web stack. It also means there's an open ecosystem. Instead of having a choice of only a couple of tools out there, there are open source libraries galore 
for building your Web VR. Web VR re renders in WebGL. There's already a lot of code out there to create WebGL applications. A few extensions you add to that, and you have Web VR, and you're ready to go. And there's a bunch of tools that support that as well. And, and the fact is, this is getting more powerful all the time. Brandon's going to do a talk in a minute to talk about where we are on the uh, technology side and the capabilities. But you can do high performance, 90 frames a second on a desktop, 60 frames a second on your mobile VR that's really good. You might not build a AAA game this way. That might be too much content to push down the pipe. That might stress out the graphics card too much. But you can do a hell of a lot falling short of that. And for web experiences, you typically want smaller, digestible, short form things anyway. So it's a great technology base for doing that. How many folks are actually have been exposed to web VR in the past and have been working with it for a little while? Right, I thought it'd be a, you know, about a quarter of you, which is about right. Uh, so just a quick capsule history for you. So just about three years ago, um, Vlad Vukovic, who's for Vukasevich from, I, I can never get his name right, from Mozilla, he's the, folk, the guy who created WebGL in the first place, um, was building 3D in the browser back in 2009, 2010, started experimenting with VR in Mozilla, and uh, then shortly after that, Brandon Jones from Chrome, who's going to speak tonight, started working on it on the Chrome side as well. And a few months later, they showed up at our WebGL meetup in the summer of 2014, showing early demos of this idea, uh, extensions to the browser with a few APIs to track your head motion and render in full screen stereo. It's really kind of all you need. It doesn't sound like a lot. There's a lot involved in doing that well, though. And that idea took hold, and experimental versions of these technologies were around for a couple of years, and then folks got serious. Last year, Microsoft jumped on board. Oculus started taking a look at this, and we started building a specification that we thought could last for a while, that could be something that's not just in a few extended browsers, could, be start, could start to be shipped in retail, and a system everyone could agree on, all the different people making the technologies. And here we are now with what we call the version 1.1 API, moving toward a 2.0, and Brandon's going to tell you about that, so I'm not going to get into that. But here are the basics. So you have uh, new APIs in your browser that tell you where the camera is pointing, well, where the headset is pointing, and then you have your virtual camera match that for your display, and where it's located. Um, these systems only track orientation, where you're looking. A uh, system like the Oculus Rift also lets you track position. So as you move in and out um, of the, toward the sensor, you, know, you can effectively move through the scene. So the APIs support the position and orientation tracking of the headset so that you can match your virtual camera to that. You then render your scene in WebGL. Now there are these other things you want to do in VR, like with these hand controllers I was describing. Those are actually in separate APIs in a browser right now in an experimental form. Uh, have folks played with the GamePad API here? You can basically build you know, uh, Xbox or PS4 controller-driven games in your browser. That capability has been around for four or five years in the browsers. Uh, Brandon cleverly got the idea to extend the GamePad API so that you can treat your uh, Vive controller as just another Xbox controller with a few extra buttons, and you add the, the pose, the position and orientation to that, and you can do touch and direct manipulation input. And what we have now, I'm going to show you a matrix. Uh, we're actually shipping in mobile browsers first. There's a lot of people supporting this. So the Firefox folks have Nightly's right now, and it's going into the release channel this summer. So that's pretty soon. And this is after a couple years, again, of these experimental versions of the browsers. Chromium, the open source desktop version, um, those are in development right now for your desktop. And Brandon can speak more exactly to the release status. Samsung's internet browser, they've been supporting the web VR, VR API back to version 1 since last spring, for a year already, or coming on it. Um, mobile Chromium, Chrome VR is what they're calling it now, is the new product name for this, is already uh, in beta. It's on your phone right now. Uh, as of last year, end of last year. Oculus has released their own uh, version for Gear VR, their own version of a browser based on the Chromium source they call Carmel, that's the code name, that came out in December of last year. And then Microsoft has announced that it, through a blog posting, and people we talked to, that they're supporting it for their new Windows Mixed Reality headsets, formerly known as Windows Holographic. Uh, so that will be on a HoloLens, presumably, though they're not making specific announcements about what products are releasing when, for HoloLens and their new VR devices they're shipping. So that is a lot of people supporting this technology, and that's pretty amazing. That's giving us a broad base of uh, headsets to work with. There's a lot of stuff out there already you can go see, and I'll, I'll make these slides available for Vanessa later to share. Um, you probably can't see the URL. It's a bit of an eye chart here for all of these, so, or take pictures if you want. But um, this is just a smattering of the things being built in WebVR. Before I took my job at Unity uh, at the end of last fall, I actually worked with Oculus, and we did a project with TripAdvisor. So I, 
I'd send you a link, you'd hit the uh, page, and two seconds later you were inside Virtual Desktop San Francisco in your Oculus Rift, and you could look around, and when you looked at a, one of the, there were red buildings in here, basically one of the color-coded buildings, uh, the actual TripAdvisor information popped up from their API. And, and it was like a little desktop, you were sort of King Kong size looking at a desktop version of San Francisco, getting your travel information. The idea behind the scenario would ultimately be you could book your hotel in there or plan your trip in there, maybe post 360s of a trip that you'd taken in there and all that. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, the folks from Sketchfab, uh, they're New York based, they can't be here tonight, but they do a lot of work in web VR. They, they give you a service for uploading your models in any format, they convert it and give you a way to embed it so anybody can see it on a page. They now have a VR viewing mode, and they actually took some Unity content, exported it through this file format called GLTF, which I'm going to mention in a second, and are rendering Unity physically based render models in a web page and cardboard ready. Gear VR ready, Oculus ready with a touch of a button. That's pretty awesome. And the list goes on. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of these six things are from six different people using six different tool sets. And of course, that's the power of the web. It's a totally open ecosystem, um, which includes JavaScript libraries like 3JS. Is everyone familiar, familiar with 3JS? Ricardo, are you in the room somewhere? Are you hiding? Where's Ricardo? The creator of 3JS is here. There he is. He's back there drinking some wine. Uh, so R Ricardo created it, uh, works at Google, Google now. And um, that's a very popular open source library for making your WebGL. It's got all the extensions you need to do WebVR now. Um, and there are other open source libraries, Babylon from uh, one of the uh, leads at Microsoft. It was this 20% project or whatever they call it up there. Um, there's some kind of ways you can do tags-based markup. Uh, I created a little language like this a couple years ago called Glam. Um, there's a really great project you're going to hear about tonight called A-Frame from the Mozilla folks. Kevin's going to speak tonight and talk about A-Frame. It's this idea that you can use markup tags as a designer to create your, your 3D world for VR. So uh, it won't steal his thunder. He's got a lot to talk about there. There are polyfills, ways to basically make things work on a flat phone, work for cardboard, using old mobile techniques, using the new VR APIs. It's called the Web VR Polyfill from Boris Smith, who's at Google. It's, I think he still works here. Um, and then there's a file format called GLTF. Folks heard of that? It's effectively like JPEG, but for 3D data. So you can convert uh, data that's in a, a package like Maya, or 3D Studio Max, or Blender, and get all of the scene data out with the full hierarchy of all your 3D objects, the lighting, the materials, your animations, your character skins, and it all goes into um, a JSON file that describes the scene, and then a packed binary file that's got really nice compact representation of your big data like your you know vertex data your normals uh, all your animation data that's really small and lean designed to be delivered originally into webgl applications good for mobile and there's been a lot of uptake on vr oculus started supporting it in their tool set for uh, mobile vr last year for sam for gear vr and so that's getting a life of its own we just uh, at gdc just uh, last month we talked about doing um version two. We're, we're about to release version two of that. It's not a standard yet. Version one is. And that's through the Cronus group, the people uh, who've done uh, WebGL in the first place. So it's all part of the same ecosystem. And then on the tool side, to actually author and create this stuff, um, there are native tools like Unity and Unreal that will export WebGL. And because of that, WebVR. Uh, those exports tend to be heavy. They're, they're doing some tricks to essentially cross-compile the whole game engine and give you that in low-level JavaScript. So that tends to be like a 10 megabyte data payload to get your stuff, which is good for a game or a piece of short form interactive entertainment content. Not so good for an ad. No one's going to wait for a 10 megabyte download to see a two-second ad, obviously, right? So there's work to be done coming out of these pro tools, but there is hope there that uh, some of that's going to happen. I work at Unity. I'm a web VR guy. You can kind of read between the lines. I, I can't really make any public commitments about that yet, but you can imagine there's a lot of interest on the part of Unity to be doing this. And then there's actually tools that were natively built for creating WebGL and WebVR that you can run in the browser. There's a company called Visor. They, they were going to try and be here, but they, they can't. Um, they're based in London and Helsinki, and, and it's making the trip um, it was a little tough for them. Uh, but they say hi, and they have a really great tool. It's just in-browser, drag-and-drop editing, and they have VR mode for playback and publishing. Really fantastic. So a lot of choice of tools for that stuff. Um, and my talk is about to end here, but I want to just throw this slide up. You might want to check these out. So this is the uh, links to all the meetup groups that I mentioned, um, two based in San Francisco, one based down in Silicon Valley. And then Brandon, who's going to speak next, 
created a great site called webvr.info that ha has links to a lot of resources, including the latest webvr spec, if you're spec inclined and want to understand what's actually in that API. Um, plus, you know, is my browser ready for it? And a lot of great documentation to get you started on your journey and, and keep you up to date as things change. Mm -hmm.